loving, and sometimes it's different. I remember one very epic trip I had where I had tossed out a big compost pile from growing mushrooms uh, years ago in another country. Uh, actually, it was a past life, I'm now recalling. But anyway, I uh, tossed out this stuff, and this thing grew this humongous mushroom. And I had taken mushrooms the previous Saturday. I had taken a full dose, which is five dried grams. So I thought, I want to take mushrooms again this Saturday, but I, uh, I think I may have picked up a tolerance. So I'll just take nine grams instead. And this is where the learning takes place. The mistakes. Treasure your mistakes. Uh, so the thing, it's like I'm sitting there and suddenly I realize, oh my God, it's coming at me. It's a hundred miles wide. It's 10 miles high. And it's just rolling toward me. It looks, and, and I barely had time to lay down. That's how fast it, and a voice said, you know, <laughs> get, prepare, the storm is about to hit the beach. And, uh, and I laid down, and it was just, it was like a tornado hitting. And at one point, I opened my eyes, and the, there was this woman in a full bondage getup with, uh, you know, piercings and rubber panties and the whole thing. And she and I was lying there between her legs. She was standing upright, and and she put her face right down next to mine, and she said, "Is it strong enough for you, asshole?" <laughs> <laughs> to which I replied, "Yes," <laughs> and she said, and then she said. They say it helps to close your eyes, cowboy. <laughs> and I later, in thinking about that trip, I realized the reason the goddess, the reason the mushroom addressed me as cowboy is because that's most people mushrooms have met have been cowboys and cowgirls because they're the people who follow the cows. And uh, most people have encountered this thing in the past. You know, Maria Sabina, the mushroom shamaness of Oaxaca, claimed not to have been initiated. She claimed that as a child left to watch the sheep and the cows, she had been hungry and had gotten into eating mushrooms. Um, so and I haven't lost my thread. This is a safety course. I haven't forgotten that. Uh, once you get launched out in there, then there are tricks for navigation. And t the two tricks that are indispensable, number one, I've already told you, have cannabis ready, because if you get into a place that you don't like, you can, you can jet out of there by just taking a toke or two. The other thing is, if you get into a place you don't like, chant. Don't do what most honkies do, which is scrunch, assume the fetal position, say, I'll, I can stand this, how many hours is this going to last? You don't do that. Sit up, take a breath, and belt it out. Huh? Drumming, too. But I really think it's important to oxygenate your body. It's very important to move the breath through. And there are hard places. If there weren't hard places, people wouldn't be so terrified of this stuff. So when you get through a hard, to a hard place, first of all, don't be an idiot. Don't abandon yourself to fear just because somebody puts something ugly in front of you. I mean, people put stuff that's ugly in front of you every day, and all you say is, yuck. So this also works there. I mean, there are, uh, there are strange places, and we each have our own private hells. I mean, there's a place I go to nearly on every ayahuasca trip that I call the meat locker. And, you know, the less said about it, the better. But every time I feel it begin to swerve, that I say, uh-oh, time to fire up a little Sinsamia here. Uh, yeah, sing the, the No Meat Locker song. Yeah.